This is Rick Miller with the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Station Ag Minute. Those of us that live in Eastern Oregon are very familiar with the drought-tolerant evergreen conifer western juniper. During this week, I will talk a little bit about the ecology, history, and concerns about western juniper. Like many topics relating to our natural resources, discussion about western juniper can cause considerable controversy especially relating to questions such as the tree, good or bad, and how do we best manage this western juniper. This is why we've been studying the tree at the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center. So first, where does western juniper grow? Western juniper grows throughout much of eastern Oregon, northeastern California, northwestern Nevada, southeast Idaho, and a few scattered stands can be found in eastern Washington. It is the only tree-sized juniper native to Oregon, with the exception of Rocky Mountain juniper, which is only found in the northeastern corner of Oregon. As we travel south into Nevada, western juniper gives way to a different but closely related species, Utah juniper. Pinion pine, which commonly grows with Utah juniper, does not grow with western juniper. Why has western juniper increased? Since its arrival, western juniper 6,000 years ago, its abundance and dis distribution has increased and decreased. Changes in the tree's abundance is mainly caused by changes in climate and fire. However, the rate of increase that has occurred since the late 1800 has never been as rapid since it first came to Oregon. Why has the tree increased so dramatically? There are several reasons. First, the weather was wetter than normal in the late 1800s up to around 1912. This increased seed production and tree establishment. Second, larger numbers of large numbers of sheep, cattle, and horses that grazed this region in the late 1800s removed the fine fuel which was required to carry fire. We also started suppressing fires shortly after the turn of the century. Our work in fire history has shown a large decline in fire occurrence in our productive mountain big sagebrush and aspen communities since the late 1800s. The reduction in fire has allowed western juniper to rapidly increase. Is the increase in western juniper good or bad? At the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center, we've been studying the effects of the increase in western juniper on wildlife, water, and plant communities. First, let's talk about wildlife. There is a considerable amount of literature and work that says juniper provides important wildlife habitat. This is true in old growth stands that provides numerous cavities for cavity nesting birds and small mammals and during the early stages of invasion of juniper into shrub grassland communities. When juniper first starts to invade a site, the addition of trees to shrub and grassland communities increases the diversity and abundance of wildlife. However, juniper is a very tough competitor. As the tree increases and dominates the site, the shrubs and many of the grasses and wildflowers disappear. As this occurs, many of the ground and shrub nesting birds and seed eating animals leave the site. Some species of concern, such as sage grouse and sage burrows, will no longer use these habitats. The loss of shrubs is also an important big game winter food. So, as the understory plants, such as shrubs and grasses, decline with the increase in juniper, many wildlife species will no longer use these habitats. Is the increase in western juniper good or bad? At the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center, we've been studying the effects of the increase in western juniper on wildlife, water, and plant communities. First, let's talk about wildlife. There is a considerable amount of literature and work that says juniper provides important wildlife habitat. This is true in old growth stands that provides numerous cavities for cavity nesting birds and small mammals and during the early stages of invasion of juniper into shrub grassland communities. When juniper first starts to invade a site, the addition of trees to shrub and grassland communities increases the diversity and abundance of wildlife. However, juniper is a very tough competitor. As the tree increases and dominates the site, the shrubs and many of the grasses and wildflowers disappear. As this occurs, many of the ground and shrub nesting birds and seed eating animals leave the site. Some species of concern, such as sage grouse and sage burrows, will no longer use these habitats. The loss of shrubs is also an important big game winter food. So as the understory plants such as shrubs and grasses decline with the increase in juniper, many wildlife species will no longer use these habitats. As western juniper invades and begins to dominate a plant community, it affects other important parts of the ecosystem besides wildlife, which we talked about yesterday. One of the greatest concerns is how it can affect the capture and safe storage of precipitation on a site. 
shrubs and especially grasses are important slowing down the flow of water across the soil surface and allowing the water to enter and be stored in the soil. As juniper increases, bare ground between the trees increase. With the loss of shrubs and grasses, water will flow off the site carrying topsoil with it. At the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center, we've been studying the effects of removing trees by cutting with chainsaws and burning. We have found that if done properly, there can be a large increase in wildflowers and grasses and an increase in the capture and storage of precipitation on the site. To summarize this week's discussion about western juniper, some trees can be beneficial while too many can be detrimental to our resources. This has been Rick Miller with the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center, Ag Minute.